<laughs> that's pretty good. Classic. <laughs> Gonna go live on Friday. Is that what that is? It's a little interesting. <laughs> Just dodge the trees. Dodge yeah. the trees. How many people we got? One. One person. One person. Here's to you. Four. Here's person. to four people. Four people. <laughs> Friday, Friday. Seven people on Friday. Super excited about what is the show that dance? Today. Give me good food. You got paid. It's all smart. So we got everybody in the, in the studio amazing. today too. Like Jody. <laughs> Boom, Diamond Dave Gangle. Tennessee, checking in. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. Diamond Dave. Still loving that ring. That's awesome. Hey, so you early tune inners, at some point you're going to figure it out. Whatever it is you figured out, write it down, okay? <laughs> what does that mean? It means just write it down. Whatever you think is going on, just put it in that comment section. Anyway, I'm Chef Ned Braden. We have Ogie Oglethorpe, Killer Carson. Player coach Reg Dunlop is coming up. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and get started. <clears throat> we can, we can. We can. So we How many people do we got? We're getting there, 30. 30? Uh, we'll wait a little bit, a little more. What's up, Jason? What's up, Matt? Can they see us? Can you hear us? Chris, what's up, man? Keeping the drink cold. Olivia, you got anybody out there? Cooking it up. That's right, Irene. Irene? Come on, Irene. Oh, yeah, I was about to sing that. Nebraska checking in. Nebraska. Home of Nebraska. Yeah. <laughs> Cornhuskers. You guys, uh, please put the name of a um, Nebraska city in the comments so we know what cities you know from Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We got enough people left? Lincoln. Lincoln. That's a place, right? Oh, we're almost there, Jody. We're, we're close. Dragging up. We're dragging up. We're dragging. All right, everybody. This is Fun Day Friday. It's Friday, March 2nd, 2018. My name is Jody Flanagan. I'm the marketing director here at Rectech Grills. This is one of my good friends, Chef Greg. This is uh, also a really good friend of mine, Mr. Yeah. Chef John from uh, Jones Creek Country Club. Um, today... We are going to show you guys how to do a whole pig on the Rectech 680. Mm. We're also, I mean, excuse me, RT700, RT700, the Rectech RT700 Bull. Thank you for correcting me, sir. We're also going to do uh, some Serrano Quick Pickle Salad, and then we're going to do a Kung Pao Brussels Sprouts. So by the time uh, you guys finish these videos and watch them, um, you will know how to cook a pig on the RT700 Bull. You will know how to make a Serrano Quick Pickle Salad. And then you're going to know exactly how to make a Kung Pao uh, Brussels Sprouts as well. So, um, guys, thank you so much for viewing. Um, Matt, uh, read out some of the comments. Um, where are you guys? Omaha. Where are you guys? Omaha. <laughs> Omaha. Omaha. Where are y'all watching from, Facebook? Where are you guys watching from? You put it in the comments. Let us shout out for you. Everybody's in Nebraska, apparently. Hey, Nebraska is a great state. It is a great state. A little cold for my taste, Jody, but still a great state. Is it cool? <laughs> They got some, they got some nice uh, beachfront property in Nebraska. Right? That's right. We got Cincinnati. We got Chicago. Ooh, Chicago. Chi town I know y'all are cold. Jason's always wondered about Brussels sprouts. We never Brussels had them. Sweet, sweet. Dallas, Georgia. Dallas, Georgia. Beloit, Kansas. Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Rock. Houston, Texas. Making the rounds. All right, Northern so, like Minnesota. Said, we're going to do a uh, whole pig. We're going to do some uh, uh, quick pickle salad. And then we're going to do Kung Pao Brussels sprouts. Guys, if uh, you think any of your friends on social media or anything would also be interested in, in that, help us out. And uh, please share this video. Uh, that way it gets out there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share it on mine, you guys. You want to yeah, go ahead and share it on yours? For sure. Uh, we're just going to share this video on social media. That way it gets out there. Because um, I know I have a bunch of friends that are going to want to watch it. So, Angie might win something. Yeah, and you might win something. So um, I'll go ahead and let the cat out the bag. We are going to give away a stampede today. That's right. I said it. We're going to give away a stampede. We're going to give away a stampede. So keep watching because uh, at the end of the video, you'll know how to cook three awesome things. And then you'll also probably win a grill. So keep watching. So I'm going to go ahead and share this now. I'm going to check in. And anytime you guys uh, feel free uh, to give us an O face the wow button, uh, if you could hit that, or the, the heart, the love, those are always better than the little thumbs up, just to give you a heads up. We love the love. We love the love, but give us an O face, a 
I want a rat tech face. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, give us this face. <laughs> give us this face. You know, we'll take a smiley face. Oh, there they the, come. There I they come. The, I want the O face. Look at them all rolling. Hit me. Hit me. Name me somebody that gave me an O face. Uh, that doesn't tell me. Oh, oh well, there's so many of them, Jody. So yes. There's Facebook. a flood of love and O-Face. <laughs> yes. yes, that's what I wanted. Oh my god, they're so flooding. All right, all right. So let's get to let's it. Let's get started. Chef Greg, what do we got going? All right, so first and foremost for our salad, I've got a Vidali onion sliced up really thin. I've hit that with a little bit of rice wine vinegar and a touch of sugar. That's going to help pull out some of that raw and tench on onion flavor and be fantastic. So in the bowl here, we have some beautiful uh, heirloom tomatoes, some European cucumbers. And we're going to uh, jazz this salad up. So we're going to go add a couple more tomatoes in here because, I mean, these things just look delicious. Chef Greg, what's the difference between a European cucumber and just a regular cucumber? Fantastic. So typically, your European cucumbers come in the store. They're wrapped in plastic. They're a hothouse cucumber. Ah. Okay. So the, the skin on those is a lot uh, thinner and not nearly as waxy. You also don't have to seed them. And uh, I think they're a, a more of a mild cucumber taste. Okay. Really my favorite kind of cucumber. What kind of cucumbers do you guys like out there? Facebook, Instagram? Go ahead and hit us up with a comment below. Yeah, what kind of tomatoes do y'all like? I like them old Roma tomatoes. Do you like Roma tomatoes? Roma tomatoes. I like Roma tomatoes. I'm a vine ripe cherry tomato kind of guy. Good that's, stuff. Yeah, that's how I usually do. Now, when Becky and I, we do our garden every year. We do, um, you know, the smaller ones. The vine, I guess they're vine ripe, but they're golden. Yes. yes. Um, and they sell them at Lowe's or Home Depot. That's the kind that we really like to plant. My they're son, delicious. My son absolutely loves those. Loves those. Good delicious. stuff. So I got some celery cut up on a bias here. We've got some serrano pepper and some Thai basil. So Thai basil is fantastic. It's got some great, almost like citrusy sweet notes to it. Um, it's got some beautiful purple color. I think it's delicious. These little uh, floral buds on the top are just packed with flavor. We'll throw some of those in there in a little bit. So nice. dressing. So to really set this apart, we've got our dressing in the mason jar here. So what we have in here is some soy sauce, some ginger, some Thai basil, a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Soy sauce, ginger, rice wine vinegar, Thai basil, mm -hmm. olive oil, and sriracha. And olive oil and sriracha. And I always, you know, with anything kind of Asian, Delicious. I always throw that sriracha. Um, could you also put like a peanut butter in there and make it like a batai? You could. You could absolutely put some peanut butter in there, get it nice and thick. Uh, be fantastic. So what we do is we're going to go ahead and marinate these. I'll grab our onions. And that juice that comes out, you don't have to add that. Um, they'll have some of that raw onion flavor. We have our celery and green onion all right so heirloom tomatoes some european cucumbers celery uh green onions and yep. then you did the uh onions with uh a little rice sugar and rice wine vinegar, vinegar. Okay. yeah we've got some serrano pepper um i like the chilies in there i think that gives you little pockets of Woo! Yeah. spicy Chef, like if you can't have, or you can't find serrano peppers, is there another pepper you could use? For yeah, this? absolutely. I mean, if you don't like it spicy, bell peppers are great. You can also find the uh, like little tricolor peppers in a bag, the red, orange, yellow ones. Jalapenos are great. Habaneros, ghost peppers, Ooh, nice. Carolina Ay Reapers. Okay, okay. Whatever you like, you know. If you don't like it spicy, don't put it in. And then, since we added celery, I think one thing that people throw away is the, the oh, celery leaves. Oh, yeah. They have great flavor here. So we've gone and, and picked our celery leaves. And we're going to add those into that salad as well. Okay, no, no sense in being wasteful, right? That is, yeah, you can definitely taste the celery in there. And that's where they come from, <laughs> celery flake. Isn't that where celery flake comes from? Don't they, uh, processors, don't they just dehydrate the celery leaf, Chef Greg? You know, good question. Uh, I think you stumped me on that one. I know the celery seeds come, come out of the bottom. Stumped the chef. We stumped him! <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Uh, oh, you know, yeah, it doesn't happen every day, folks. It you doesn't know. happen every day. Does anybody I, out there know I, the answer that Chef know, Greg doesn't know? I guess I got to go back in the old Iron League. <laughs> oh! Greg so, is so out. red right now. <laughs> shout out, shout out. Shout out. Old Iron League. I think uh, player coach Reg Dunlop's got to come over here and straighten me out. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our dressing in here. And we want to let this ride for maybe about 30 minutes or so. No better utensils than your hands. Kind of mix this up. And uh, that acid in the marinade will pull out some of the liquid in the tomatoes, and it is going to be delicious. It looks great. Uh, it smells amazing. So what was in that, um, that uh, marinade or dressing again? So that was going to be rice wine vinegar, sriracha, soy sauce, um, ginger, olive oil, Thai basil. Yeah. Sweet, yeah. sweet. And we're going to have that recipe in the notes section of Facebook too and add it to, our, to the website uh, if you guys can't find it.
Okay, so it smells awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's delicious. You guys want to smell it? Let's smell it. You guys want to smell it? Get on in there. Get on that smell of vision. <sighs> Cell leaves are used to treat conditions such as asthma because it contains a pepe 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 and a flavonoid. <laughs> With Whoa. vasodilator affects the ox. I'm done reading that. Cool. Cool. Uh, Thank you. Good to know. Yeah. Very much. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> yes. So you could. Could you do it like this, Chef Greg? You huh? could. Huh? Could you? I'm glad you weren't a black kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Brussels sprouts. We've gone and cut these in half. And our our kung pao sauce that we're going to use also in a mason jar because I mean. That's what we do down there. That's what we do down here. So that marinade is kind of similar. So we've got some sriracha, some soy sauce, some hoisin sauce. I love hoisin. Hoisin sauce is like, oh my god. Yeah, Put it on everything. Yeah, hey, you answered this for me once. What is hoisin sauce made of? So it's a fermented uh, black beans, right? So mm -hmm. it's good. It's like Asian barbecue sauce. The more you know. The more you know. The farther you go. It makes it taste better. All right, yeah, 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 absolutely. So mm, we've also got some sesame oil on here. Oh, yeah. So what is this made up of? So this is oh my, uh, yeah. rice wine vinegar, sriracha hoisin, uh, olive oil, some sesame oil, uh, rice wine vinegar, and I think I said that? Yes. That's about it. That's about it. That's, yeah. it smells amazing. That's about it. So we're going to dress these up with <laughs> some olive oil, and we're going to persuade an Asian. Oh, Jerry. Oh, oh, hey. oh. Oh. Ah. Jody, Jody seasoning here. Ha! So... You know, before we get a line change here and head in the back, sprinkle some of that on there. So we have the RT 700, the bull. The bull, baby. The bull. At 400 degrees, we've got a grill mat on there. Everything is getting preheated. We will roast these for about 30 minutes or so until they are golden brown. At what temperature will we 400 degrees. 400 for about 30. And then we are going to take them off, put them in a bowl, hit them with a Kung Pao sauce. Okay. Back on the mat to get all caramelized. And then, uh, and then it's time to... Pick the pig. Pick a pig, baby. Pick a pig. Cool. So 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. We're going to take them out. You're going to toss them in the kung pao, and then you're going to put them back in. Yeah. It's a little bit longer. Sweet. And that's going to that's going to really firm up that uh, sauce and make it, will it be kind of sticky? Oh, it's going to be like crispy, crunchy on the outside. It's going to be fantastic. So we're going to look at the pig. Let's go look at the pig, everybody. We'll see you about five, ten minutes. One. Old-time hockey. Mm -hmm. She's almost done. Am I holding it right? Can you see it? 194, 194. She's almost there, everybody. Rachel just opened it up. That's why it's 228. Good job, Rachel. Good job. Good Rachel. job. Cheese and crackers. Her name's Suzanne for the rest of the day. Susan. Susan. Suzanne. 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 Bye. Palm Bay, Florida checking in. Hey, uh, hey guys. Hey, everybody checking in. Let us know where you're from. So we'll give you a shout out. How cool is that, huh? Yeah. Loving it. You could be from uh, Charlotte. West Virginia, right? What? West Virginia. Shout out Charlotte, West Virginia. Charlestown, West Virginia. Charles Charlestown, West Virginia. Yes. Charlestown, West Virginia. John Wilson checking in from Disney John World. John Wilson's in Disney World. Yeah, I just saw him hugging a Wookiee. He got to hug a Wookiee. <laughs> what? I swear, we're friends on Facebook. Lucky he guy. He sent us the uh, Wookiee shoulder. Oh, That's okay. a good one. That's a good one. Hey, he's at Disney World? Yeah, he's at Disney World. Oh, Harry's look for Harry. World. If you find Spider All right. Oh, everyone cool. look at me right now. Are we going to give them we're going to get oh, Harry Doss, our shipping manager, is in Disney World right now. So, if you find Harry, I want you to walk up to him and just give him the biggest hug and just yell out, "Rock Tech Harry!" <laughs> and I promise you, I will send you something. Get a picture. Get a picture with him. Send it in. If you don't know what Harry looks like, <laughs> this is Harry. <laughs> Those of you who are at Disney World, look for that face. Look for this guy. <laughs> Give him a hug. Take a picture with him. We'll send you something. He loves hugs. I promise. He loves hugs. <laughs> he loves them. If you find this guy at Disney World, give him a hug. Right here, right here. Harry's gonna right freak right out. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> Find this man! Find this man! You know, I think he likes more to 
All right, so I think it's time we get these Brussels sprouts on. Yes, sir. So we've got our RT700 bowl preheated to 400 degrees, 400 degrees, with some grill mats. Wait, what'd you do to this uh, first chef there? Olive oil and uh, Jody's. Oh, that's big. Asian persuasion. Cool. Fantastic. And we're just gonna put these on the cooking mat, right? Just put them on the mat. Nothing will fall through. And what else uh, are the cooking mats good for? Oh, man, everything. Uh, they're good for doing roasted veg like we're doing here, potatoes, delicate things like fish. It doesn't fall fall through. Shrimp is great. Anything small. So, um, again, it doesn't, doesn't fall through the grate. Awesome. Yeah, so they're good, good stuff. What do you guys use your cooking mat for? Yeah, if you guys have the cooking mat out there, uh, let us know what you're using your cooking mat for. Matt's going to yell out what you guys. Me, I use it a lot for bacon and a lot for shrimp. That is jerky. You can use it for beef jerky as well. Uh, my wife actually uses it for cookies. So I usually use it for veg. So zucchini, squash, I like to slice it up, put it on there. It's good. Meatloaf. Meatloaf, meatloaf. meatloaf. yes, yeah, absolutely yeah, right. You can roll your meatloaf up in and get you some baker's twine. You know, it's going to be a, a nice solid tube. Like a big fatty? Like a big fatty, like a big exactly. Fatty. There you go. I think it's time to go to see the pig. Speaking of big pig, fatty. Everyone? No? Okay, we'll just stay well, right yeah, here. We'll okay, yeah, yeah. No, no yeah, one cares yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, wait a second. Give me a bunch of O faces. O face time. O faces. If you don't give me enough O faces, you're not going to be able to see the pig. Uh -oh. Instagram, uh -oh. I need to see the O faces. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. We got O faces? Uh -oh. Here they come. Here they come. Oh, come on. Oh, 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 look at them. All right, go show them. The oh, oh, they earned it. They earned it. Big time. Hey, Olivia. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, John. Yes, sir. Uh, will you explain to everybody that They're still o -facing. that's not from Augusta, Georgia? Oh, yeah. What is the substance that is covering our grill right now? This is pollen. For those of you who aren't infested with trees and flowers, <laughs> uh, this is the time of the year in Augusta where we get pollen out the wazoo. So, if you have allergies, now is not the time to come to Augusta. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when coming to work this morning, um, there's this one spot that I always drive by, and the wind was whipping, and it was nothing but yellow haze just coming in oh, here. It was nuts. Man. And then it rains, and it looks like there's yellow paint all over the yeah. world. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing. <laughs> all right, so um, you know what? I, I'd hate to open this. Yeah, I think we're at 194. I think it's safe to open. Okay, you sure? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see. Now, uh, Chef Greg, how big of a pig is this? 45 pounds. 45 pounds. And Chef Greg, how oh. long was it on for? Oh, oh. So Jody did me a solid and put it on at 8 o'clock last night. So Jody, thank you. Yes. Um, I checked it at 5 o'clock this morning, and it was 155 degrees. But had I had the power, the magic power of the app, I could have stayed in bed because Jody was in bed and saw it was at 155 degrees internal. But me, I had to drive down here to look at it. So... <laughs> That's that, dedication. Jeff. That Wi-Fi yeah. controller is pretty sweet. Pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah. You can stay in bed Keeps and cook it big. So, Ooh. wow. Yes, sir. So she's at 195 now. She's pretty much done. Pretty much done. Yep. Um, so when you got here at five, you said you cranked it up, right? Yeah, I put it at a 230 degrees to kind of kick it up a little bit. And uh, look at that mahogany color. It's beautiful. Now we brined this pig. Oh. MG. Yeah. Why, guys, it, why is it on its side? Well, I can stand it up. Because yeah, the reason as it was tired. It would not fit. <laughs> it was because tired. Because it would not fit. Chef Greg, what did you put in your brine? Oh, man. We put some apple cider. Okay. Not the vinegar, but apple cider. We put some soy sauce. Nice. We put some limes, some oranges, some fresh ginger, some lemongrass, wow. some kefir lime leaves. So it was a pretty happy Asian yeah. like. And if you guys check the story, the Facebook story or the Instagram story, Chef Greg's actual recipe is on that. So ch definitely check that out. Uh, guys, make sure you, you check out our stories and stuff like that because you're always going to get some behind the scenes and extra stuff. Um, and yeah, when I put it on last night, it was still a little frozen. It was really tough. The legs were really tight. Um, so I just decided to put it on its side. There was nobody going to be here to mop it. There was nobody going to be here to watch it. Um, so we decided just to cook it on its side. And since I can't feel my hands, this thing is hotter than the Jesus. Look at the, look at the milk. Just in there. Ring, 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 ring. So we were at, uh, that's 
Oh, that's fat. Oh, wow. Um, Look at it. Alrighty. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take this off and we're going to put it on a nice sheet pan for you. We're going to line that sheet pan with kale. We're also, uh, what else are we going to do? I got some pineapples, some apples. We're going to make a nice little display for you guys, show you how to do it at home. And uh, we'll have Greg and John butcher it up, uh, walk through each piece. Um, it, but, you'll learn something today. But player coach Reg Dunlop, he already okay. claimed the cheek. Did okay. he claim it? He claimed the okay. cheek. All right. So Rachel's there's only too. two cheeks on the pig, and Reg Dunlop's getting one. I got two cheeks. Uh, huh? Uh, huh? Uh, huh? You like that? What you Give got? me an O face if you like that. And what you Give got, me an O face. What's you guys' like favorite it? part of the pig? Y'all comment and let us oh, know yeah. which part of the pig yeah. you guys like to eat. Um, For I sure. I'm a rib guy or a cheek guy. You can't beat the cheek. Oh, no, the cheeks. That just, I'm a rib guy. Yeah. I love the ribs. Yeah, that's good. Wow. Yeah. Gosh, it's, it's really hard, but it's, it's probably got to be a belly. You can do so many different things with it. You can do so many different things. I like banh mi. I like bacon. So mm. it's probably it for What me, about so. the pig ear? Pig ear. Yeah. What about that ear? Now, Chef, um, you brought some duck fat yeah. today. We what did. are you going to do with that duck fat? So we're going to take the skin off, and we're going to put the duck fat in the matador. And we are going to make our own pork rinds. Oh, we're going to do pork rinds. Oh, Sweet. So that's yeah. another extra thing that we didn't that know. That fat's all dried out, and we're going to throw it that, that duck fat, and those things are going to puff and be pretty stupid delicious. Sweet. What are your all's favorite pork rinds? What flavor? Tell me. Oh, Comment. Snap. I want to oh, hear snap. what flavor pork rinds. What's the difference rinds? between pork rind and chicharron? The chicharrones are the belly, so there's more meat attached. The pork rinds are like air dried and crispy. Now um, I didn't I didn't mess that one up. No, you didn't, yeah. Chef. You're honest. You're honest, <laughs> Chef. Now I like making crackling cornbread. So oh, where do yes. they get the cracklings from? Is that more like chicharron? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, okay. sometimes there's more meat in there. It could be uh, some of the skin right before it's gotten all the way dried out. But you can use crackling from anything. Like duck skin makes great crackling. Yep. Chicken skin makes great crackling. That little end, the, the turkey stuff that doesn't kind of get crisp up, makes really good crackling too. It's good. Cool. Learning all kinds of stuff today. Yeah, there we go. Now I was talking to Big Green Craig. Shout out Big Green Craig. Y'all follow him. He's an awesome guy. He cooks on a rec tech all the time. Uh, Big Green Craig actually likes uh, to boil water and then pour it over the skin mm -hmm. of these of these smaller pigs. And he mm -hmm. says it makes for really great skin. Yeah. Um, essentially, what is that doing? So what it's doing there, one, it's helping you a couple things. So sometimes when you get a pig, there might be a little bit of fur still okay. on the pig. Okay. So that hot water or that hot oil you use helps kind of pull that one off. But it tends to cook the fat a little bit so that it gives you a crispier skin. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Good stuff. Shout out for Big Green Crack for that tip. Boiling water and pouring. pouring. What is it called? What was it? He called it something. Sorry, Greg. It's I forgot done. the word for it. But he, uh, yeah. I don't know. Not basting. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Mopping. <laughs> no. All Big right. Green Craig, tell us what. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Big Green Craig, Craig help give me those things. So, but here we go. Here's our piggy. Cool. So, we'll be back in about five to ten minutes. Um, show you guys how to plate this bad boy up. Make some pork rinds on the matador. Ready? Congratulations. Mine is in uh, How long have you been married? Eight years? Seven years? Eight years? Nice. She don't tell her that. She don't remember either. <laughs> Alright guys, we're back. Just to give you guys a little recap, we cooked this 45 pound pig on the RT700 bull at 200 degrees. We put it on at 8 p.m. My man, Chef Greg, got here at 5 a.m. and jacked it up to 230. It was probably at what? What temperature was it at? 155. At about 155 at 5 a.m. this morning. We cooked it from 5 a.m. till about 1130, 12-ish at 230 degrees and it finished off then. Um, just to give you guys a heads up of time and temp. Just remember at the end of this video, we'll be giving away a stampede. So I need to see some O faces. <laughs> like Matt, O face. So throw me some O faces. Hey Ray! What's up, hey, Ray? Ray! Ray! Yeah! Ray! Yeah! Just in time, man. Yeah. Yeah, Ray. Woo! What's up, new Rec Tech family? Ready to cut the pig? Hmm? <laughs> time, time to cut the pig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, if you guys think that any of your buddies or any of your family or any of your friends would like to see us cut this pig up, go ahead and take the time now to share this video on Facebook, please. It would really help us out. Throw us some O faces out there. O faces. O faces. They are. O faces. And hearts. And, and hearts. hearts. We love the hearts. Yep. 
So, John, I'm going to pass off our pass buddy. Pass it off to Buddy. Pass off to Buddy. So, our pig here, Ogie Oglethorpe. Ogie Oglethorpe Ogie is the name of this pig. Oglethorpe. So, there's a couple ways to do this, especially for buffet. A lot of times it's nice and pretty and wonderful, and oh, everybody gets their pictures. So, the first thing I like to do is kind of score the fat a little bit to make it easier to get to the meat. So, I just kind of split it down the back. Look how like, crispy that is. This looks beautiful, Chef Greg. You so hear that crackling. Mm -hmm. I can't quite remember what I brined this bad boy in. You want to run yes. down the laundry list? Yes, guys. I want to. I want to read this off to y'all and tell y'all what we brined this in. Okay. Like I said, if you were uh, on Facebook or Instagram and you look at our story, you can actually screenshot this exact recipe. So uh, 18 limes zested and juices. 12 limes zested and juiced. Uh, kefir lime leaves. Not sure what that is, Chef Greg. 20 cloves of garlic, a half of cup of black pepper, a half a cup of red pepper flakes, two cups of kosher salt, two pounds of dark brown sugar. Holy I like crap. it dark. 16 ounces dark soy sauce, 16 ounce mirin or sake, I would rather do sake. Uh, 32 ounces orange juice, 32 ounce apple cider, two gallons of water, and about 20 pounds of ice. Yep, there you go, that sounds about right. So you wanted to boil that. So let's that's it? Steep for about 30 minutes. Yeah, that's all the things that was in. That's not that much at all. You can easily remember that. I'm mean, trying to make it taste good. Uh, <laughs> and we let it brine for 24 hours. Checked out that skin. Cheese and crackers. Delicious. So we're actually going to cook this in duck fat on the matador. We're going to scrape A little this. later. Yeah, we'll scrape all the uh, stuff off the back, slice it up, and put it in the matador and make some uh, pork rind. You guys want to do a screenshot? Matt, go ahead and and get on that really quick just y'all do a screenshot if you want to get uh, chef greg's brine recipe it's pretty good though. and facebook and instagram what are some of y'all's favorite brine yeah recipes? yeah what do y'all brine y'all's meat in your chickens your pork whatever it may be let us know comment back let us know all right so back to my favorite part of it the, the cheek yes, sir. the cheek right here we know that you love cheeks oh, i'm a cheeky kind of guy cheeky. Cheeky. so it's kind of hard to do upside down and backwards but i will do my darndest Upside down and backwards. That's a That's new, not your that first time, though, awesome. Chef Craig. Come on now. That's a comma piggy. Ah, comma piggy. Kind of like comma sutra. Right? You get it? Yeah. It's a sex joke. <laughs> All right, it's so, a sex joke. so player coach Reg Dunlop needs to come in here for his cheek. Coach. Player coach. I player think coach. Is he's almost a, ready. He's got an important meeting. What? He's in an important meeting. Chicken and sweet yeah, tea. Over here. Am I heard that before? So that right there tea. is like the oyster of deliciousness. Right. So, Reg. There you go. Coach, player, Rich Dun uh, Dunlap. We'll get you some plates here. Hang on. Okay. Here you go. So we can look at our buddy here. And again, your shoulder. So this would be all your pulled pork would normally come out of here. Your ribs are going to be back in this area. Your belly underneath. Now in suckling pigs, the belly is kind of small. So um, and you've got your hand back here. Okay. So, Sorry, there's just so many people in here. It's awesome. It's very cool. So there's a couple ways to go about it. You can actually just take your hands in there, and again, I'd let it cool down a little bit. And again, this is going to be the butt. I think it's done cutting it. We'll give everybody some stuff. So you can kind of just come in here and pull this off. Oh, yeah, it looks great. So here's that joint. There's that shoulder blade. There's that shoulder blade. And again, to show you how tender this is, we'll lift it up. And this pig, you know, you said it was about 8 to 10 weeks old. You know, so it didn't have a lot of time to get tough. No, not at all. Super tender. This would be all your pulled pork. So if you were doing this, again, I'd take a picture and then take it apart. And you can pile up your meat. Make it tasty. And that's the... Here's the, the bone you guys pull out when doing your pork foots. Woo! That's hot. Right there. Look at that. Clean. Nice. Right out. Clean as a whistle. Nice. That thing didn't have a long time to develop. Nope. It even smells sweet. <laughs> Special. Chef Greg, where did you put the uh, thermometers that you tipped uh, out? What such part, a good question. What part question. Of the pig? So we put one in the shoulder and then we put one in the ham. And those are kind of the two important areas we want to see because the rest of this is so so tender. Now back here, this is going to be where your your loin and tenderloin are. Okay. So what's the difference in the loin and tenderloin, Chef Greg? So the loin is going to be the larger muscle, and the tenderloin is actually going to be the underside of this where it's a little more protected. But is it true or false that the tenderloin is more tender? It is true, absolutely. Ooh, why, why is it more tender, Chef Greg? Because it doesn't move. So if you look at any of your uh, your your muscles, like your shoulder, uh, for example. <laughs> lots of, <laughs> that's the O-face right there. 
So your muscles that, something. the muscles that, that move more, uh, there's a lot more blood moving through that muscle, so it's it's more of a meaty flavor, it's more intense. Whereas the muscles that are protected that don't move or tend to be less flavorful but more tender. Ooh. Guys, if you're watching this and you didn't learn something, Rec Tech Academy, May 3rd through the 6th. There you go. This Late guy will be here, he's one of the instructors. He's gonna walk all of this, walk you through all of this. Smithfield is gonna give you uh, pretty much the same demonstration, but go through the whole pig as well. So this is another good reason to come to uh, Rec Tech Academy. And again, besides you, the free booze. What we can also do is we can see if we can get the ribs out of here. Again, these are gonna be so tender. Aww. And that's actually my favorite part of the pig, Chef Greg. The ribs? Yes, sir. I'm a fan. Let's go ahead and butterfly this bad boy open. All right. Chef Greg is a trained professional. Please, if you're gonna do this at home, be very careful. All right, so you can see how hot that is right here. Yeah, steaming. Steaming. Y'all picked a good day to come, man. Sure. So here are your ribs. Okay, so again, if you had the bandsaw, we could cut those raw, and that would be your baby backs right in here. So, foregoing my, my fingers, and I just threw a piece of meat at Rachel. So here you go. Here's your ribs. They're kind of small again, a little baby pig. Yeah. So the ribs that we get, uh, that we purchase at the store, about what size pig do those come from? Oh, they're from big pigs. Uh, you figure probably 150, 125 pounds. So this would be the ham again, more skin. Rear part of the loin. Woo! Chef Greg, you're going to be able, if you hunt wild pig boar, um, you'll be able to break it down pretty much the same way, do it the same process. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Does it depend on the size when you, like, if you're going to brine it or pulling it apart? Does that matter at all? Or? No, no. It'll just take, uh, the brine will take still about 24 hours. It might take longer to cook. Got to have a big old cooler, too. Yeah, that's for sure. But I know a lot of my friends around here do are a hog hunt. There's a big, huge pig pro problem in Augusta and in Georgia in general. So you can kill pigs on site. So we, you know, every once in a while, someone will kill a pig. Cool. Oh, absolutely. Anybody out there? Icer coolers. Icer coolers are large enough to fit these pigs. Shout out. So just look how tender this is. This is this is the actual the, the loin. I mean, there's just nothing to it. Look at that smoke. Pink smoke. And besides brining it, Chef Greg, what else did we do to this pig? That was it. We didn't do anything to this pig besides brining it. Mm -hmm. We put it in a Rectech RT700 oh. at 200 degrees. That's uh, the flavor eight. alarm? That's the flavor alarm. That's the flavor it's alarm. That's going off. That's how amazing this pig is. Mm. What is that? At 200 degrees from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. Chef Greg at 5 a.m. turned it up to 230 degrees. We then cooked it from 5 a.m. to about 11.30 at 230 degrees until it reached an internal of 195 degrees. Mm -hmm. You, well, you should let it rest a little bit. We are diving right in. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. And we've got our salad and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are right here. The Kung Pao Brussels sprouts. Oh, yeah. They're pretty good. And I know you're sitting at home and you're like, why in the hell did these guys do a salad with pig? Well, guys, we showed you how to do... We showed you how to do pork and beans 50 different ways. We showed you how to do mac and cheese 50 different ways. We showed you how to do corn. We figured we would try to show you a something a little bit different that I could eat that whole bowl. That salad is so good, I promise you. And eating all this heavy food, you need something light to kind of balance it. That's exactly, a, that's I mean, a really, really the, good Bikini season's coming up, so. It totally is. Shoot. Gotta get that speed up. I'm getting ready, you ready. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or anything? Uh, if you guys just let us know where you're at, we'll shout you out. Give us some comments on what you think. Yeah, what's your favorite size animal to cook? Mine's 40 to 45 pounds. <laughs> question is that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to get a reaction. Where's the O faces at? We got any of those? Faces. It's O face time. Hey, Jody, they, they can't hear you. It's going to be louder. Hey! <laughs> can you follow us on social media? Thanks. There you go. Pig ears right there. Super crispy. But again, share this video, video, guys, with your friends and family if you think that they would want to know how uh, to essentially dissect one of these pigs when you cook it at your house for, your, for you and your family. Um, you know, tax season is here. With that tax money, go ahead and order you a pig up uh, and really, uh, you know, fire it off. Or just get out in the wild, and if you're in Georgia, and go kill yourself a hog. Yeah. 
Mine? It's super easy. We did nothing to this pig but let it sit in a cooler overnight with stuff. That's it. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of stuff. <laughs> Big list. Big list. Big list of stuff. But the grill did everything. The grill did everything. We did nothing. Well, well, Chef Greg did. I did something. Yeah, Chef, Chef Greg, Greg got up at like Chef 5. Now, stuff. had I had that Wi Fi app on my phone, I could have stayed in bed. And see, I woke up and at like 6 and I turned on my app. I'll show you guys because, you know, I got my, of course, I got my rec tech background. So, and then I'm just going to hit the app. And this grill is obviously off. But let's see if the temperature chart is still up from our last cook. Please bear with me. All right, it's not gonna show up. But yeah, it's just as easy as turning it on, monitoring it. It's got the two probes in there. Chef Greg, where did you say was the perfect spot to put those probes? Oh, we did the shoulder and the ham. Shoulder and ham. You're looking for 195. Um, suggested cooking temperature. What would you prefer? Because we had all day and all night at 200 degrees. Yeah. We could do it. No, 200 is fine. 225 is good. Um, and I'm a 250 kind of guy. 225 to me just takes a little bit longer, and and I like 250. So. That's how it is. Uh, Chef Greg, didn't you say this pig got a name? We called it Ogie Oglethorpe. Ogie, Ogie. Oglethorpe. Okay. So if anybody knows what, well, the, what the hell we've been talking about for the last hour what are we and three minutes? videos? We got three videos, yeah. three live videos. Yeah. I mean, you had a player coach Ned Ned Dunlop. Yep. Okay. You had Killer Carlson. Killer Ned Braden. We had to go back to the Iron League. Iron League. Iron League. Iron League. Iron League. Uh, Charleston, West Virginia. Ogie Oglethorpe, Suzanne. Suzanne, Suzanne made a guest appearance. Suzanne so, appearance. again, if you know what the hell we're talking about, go Put ahead in the comment it. section. Please do. Put in the comment section if you think you know what we've been talking about. They do. Who, who was the very first person? Josh Jacobs. Josh, Josh Jacobs. Jacobs. Congratulations, Josh Jacobs. You just won yourself a stampede. Oh! Oh! Unless that wasn't the name of the movie and I just messed up so bad. <laughs> what, what was the name of the movie? What did he say? What did he say back? Well, we can't. That was just first person? Yep, just Slap first shot. person. Slap shot. Oh! Oh! Right. So. That'd be terrible if I was wrong, wouldn't it? Josh <laughs> Jacobs, my friend, my new family member, my brother. I want you to call 855-696-0890, toll free, or you can use our local number, 706-922-0890. And I want you to ask for Connor. And I want you to tell him that you got the slap shot answer correct, and we'll get to get you a stampede headed your way in May when they're available. Okay, buddy? Thank you so much for watching. Guys, if you want to win a grill, if you want to win some awesome prizes, please, please, please share this video and set your notifications to let you know when we go live uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of this over the summer. We're going to be giving away a lot of stuff. We've got new products that we want to showcase. Um, I just, uh, just again, if you guys know anybody that thinks that, that you think that they might like this video, please share it. Please, please, please give us some O faces if you can. Oh, oh. or uh, I want a rec tech face. Um, <laughs> we would really appreciate it. It, it. it does nothing but help us out. You're already watching. Go ahead and click. I'm gonna go ahead and share right now. I'm gonna share again too. Um, just take the time, but. Chef Greg, do you have anything in closing while I share this video? RecTech Academy, May 3rd through the 6th here in Augusta, Georgia. Learn everything. It's going to be Cinco de Mayo as well, so we've yes. got some special stuff planned. Some live concerts, the Budweiser van, truck, whatever will be there. No, my buddy, um, my buddies with Budweiser, um, Logan Stancil. What's up, Logan? He's going to have a lot of awesome craft beers out there as well. So if you're not a Budweiser guy, you're not a Bud Light guy, you're not a... a what is, the, what is that other one? The, the Bud Light Lime. If you ain't a Bud Light Lime guy, there's going to be awesome uh, craft beer, Georgia craft beer out there as well. Let me see here. I'm drinking an awesome beer right now. It's called the Driving and Crying Straight to Hell Mystery Road IPA from Kennesaw, Georgia. This is an awesome Georgia beer. So we'd like to support local. If you guys have any beer you want us to taste, send it to us. Our address is 2004 Westside Drive, Augusta, Georgia, 30907. Next Friday? What are we going to call next Friday? Next Friday? I'm not going to be here. Are you going to be here? Meatball Mayhem. Thank you, Dylan. So we're going to do a meatball. Sweet. So uh, what is it? National Meatball Day on Friday. That's right. Next Friday. So National that's awesome. Meatball Madness. And Jody, Dylan said we're killing it today. Dylan, my man! Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, 
Give me an old face, Dylan. Oh, so oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, thank you guys so much for watching us. Once again, thank you for the uh, thank you letters, the calls, the emails. We really do appreciate it. If you need anything, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. We're going to come right back behind once this video is posted. We're going to answer all those questions for you. Um, cheers. Cheers. Thank you. You real money. Thank you, sir. Cheers. cheers. Thank you to professionals. Yes, These guys are straight up professionals. Um, they're world class cooks, chefs. So you guys can learn so much from them. We're gonna have YouTube pages um, set up for these guys. So make sure you subscribe to ours as well as theirs. And there is nothing um, that you will be left with um, unanswered for sure. Okay. We're gonna do. Are you, we're gonna fry up some skin later. We'll give it a shot. We're gonna fry up some skin later. So if you guys want to come back, uh, please do. Thank you guys so much. Remember, please share this and give us an O face. Oh. From everybody here at Rec Tech World Headquarters, thank you so much. Have a great and safe weekend. Friday, Friday. Alright, go grab the shovel five. Let's that. butcher this. Look at that, guys. We got enough picks. Yeah. Look at that. Alright, guys. See y'all later.